Hey everyone, this is uh, Lois Banks coming to you uh, from the Lois uh, Banks Ministry and I just wanted to uh, give everybody um, an update on my um, hair uh, growth and also to um, and, um, a topic on um, heaven and my experience of uh, going to heaven. Well, first of all, I just want to say that the back of my locks are now past the middle um, of my back. They're going towards my uh, gluteus maximus. And for all those who don't know what that is, my my bottom. So uh, my hair um, is growing um, a lot. It grows really fast in its natural state. And I wanted to show you... Um, the oil that I actually use on my hair. It's called aloe vera oil. It's organic. Um, I love to uh, put this oil in my hair. My hair seems to really, really love uh, the moisture um, that I get with the aloe vera oil. And um, I'm just going to continue just to let my, my locks continue uh to grow as long as they want. I've always had a head full of hair. I always had hair. Um, the longest I've had my hair in this, um, you know, pressed out state um, was a little past uh, my shoulders. But, you know, I had a conversation with the Lord. I said, Lord, you know, I've been having my hair in a natural state uh, for many years. No perms on my hair. I used to wear afro, knots, all kinds of natural uh, hairstyles. And, um, um, a few people that I know, one in particular, uh, wore their locks and it was just so beautiful. And, you know, I get inspired with nonverbal and verbal uh, communication. And I, you know, had a conversation with the Lord about my hair and where I wanted the length of my hair. And the Lord just put in my, in my spirit, just lock your hair up and leave it alone. Just let it grow in its natural state. And so that's what I did. And my hair just took off and um, grew. Now, I didn't like the beginning stages of, you know, the, the, the locks. You know, I had this huge, huge, huge afro. But when, you know, when you lock your hair up, you get a lot of shrinkage. And, you know, I just didn't like that look. But I had to deal with it. And I had to rock the look. And, uh you just, you know, get used to my hair and that shrinkage uh, look. But now, you know, the front part of my hair, you can see how long the locks are now. But the back part of my locks, back of my locks are going down my back. I mean, they're way past the middle of my back. And I'll get one of my children to take um, a picture of the my locks in the back and so I can show everybody. But I plan to rock my locks from here on out. I'm just not even going to bother my hair anymore and afro and all that i'm just gonna keep it locked up and this just let my hair grow because there's so many different hairstyles you can uh wear uh in the locks and i've always liked the uh natural state i like you know whether it was um an afro or my knots you know my bantu knots or whatever i just like that natural state and i don't like to be programmed to look like another culture you know, God created my skin tone brown, and he created my hair to be uh, the culture that goes with people brown uh, complected. They have melanin in their skin, and I love my hair. I, I love my skin tone. I love my hair. Um, I like all these... Um, uh, all the features that God has blessed me with, I love it. And so I'm just going to rock it and go with it and just let my hair um, continue to grow. Um, then um, I was preparing today to uh, get up and um, preparing for my day. And the Lord just flashed the word heaven uh, in my spirit. He spelled it out where I can see it. And then he flashed this title um, of my book, um, walking with god it's a book that i wrote uh 12 years ago and for all of those who don't know i am a christian author i've been a christian author for the past uh 30 years and in this particular book that i wrote entitled walking with god um god wanted me to share my intimate personal walk with him which i was really really reluctant 
Um, I know to obey God and to do what he is asking me to do, but my personal walk with God was personal to me, and I didn't want to share that uh, with the world because, you know, a lot of the Christians that I associated with and that I saw in the, in my surroundings in church, they had such a uh, mediocre walk with God. It was just like it wasn't even real. It was like they were just playing along with the church scene, and and it, it just didn't seem like it was real to me. Um, and the the things that God was doing in my life, I didn't want to share with anybody because nobody around me was experiencing that. And so, you know, I talked to my children about it, talked to my mother about it, and that was about as far as that went. Because um, God was doing stuff like opening up blind eyes through my prayers. He was doing miraculous miracles. Money would just show up every day at my house, just checks. And I didn't even know where the money was coming from, but they were real checks. I mean, I was doing an investigation um, with the bank to find out where the money was coming from. They said, it's your money. Go ahead and cash the checks. I mean, there were just so many blessings and miracles that God was doing for me that I just hadn't heard other people um, experience. And so even my experience of going to heaven, I didn't even want to share that with anybody because folks just have, to me, have like a plastic walk with God. It don't seem real. It don't seem like they have a, a real intimate walk with their father, like they don't really know him. And I didn't want to talk about my walk with the Lord. I just wanted to, you know, uh, keep my personal walk personal. But God asked me to share my personal walk with the world. And I had to think outside the box and understand that God wants other people to walk close to him as well. He wants all his children um, to have a very, very close walk with him. And so um, I was invited to speak on the day uh, Greg Davis show it was a national television show and the topic of heaven um, came up and I shared my experience with uh, actually going to heaven. I didn't ask to go to heaven. God just summons me there. He just gave a command for me to come. And I remember being at home. My children were very, very small at that time, five and two. And I was married. And I remember falling asleep in a recliner. And when I woke up, I was standing outside of my body. And I could see my body in the recliner. I knew my spirit had left um, my body in you know, when you're separated from your outside of your body, you are still alive. You can think and you can reason. And the first thought that came across my mind were my babies. And I wanted to get back in my body because I did not want to be separated from my children. You know, my babies were of concern uh, to me, but that was not the plan of God. That was not the will of God at that moment. God wanted me to go to heaven. He wanted to, He wanted me to see that when you're absent from the body, when your spirit leaves your body, is is no pain, there's no discomfort or anything like that. So he he wanted to deliver me from the fear of death, which many people have, people are afraid to die. And then there were two angels on the side of me. They had a gold face and they escorted my spirit um, to heaven in the presence of God. I wasn't sick. I didn't have no disease. There was nothing physically going on with me. It was just... Um, I was summoned by God to stand in his presence, to um, experience heaven, to know that it was real, um, and then to share my insights of what heaven uh, looks like. And while I was there, um, God allowed me to do a, a holy dance in front of him. And it's a dance that I do inside of my house when I'm worshiping God. It's a, sort of like a ballet before the Lord, and I worship him in a dance, and he allowed me to do that in his presence in heaven. And the light was very, very bright. It was brighter than bright. And it was the city was lit up with the power and the presence um, of God. And then God himself, um, the Father God himself, 
pulled out this book. It looked just like the Bible. And when he opened up the Bible, or when he opened up this book, every letter of every word inside of this book vibrated with power. And then God began to explain to me that he was the word. It's the, the Bible that we have on earth, the words are God in word format feel with his power that's why when you open up your bible and you read the word of god it's filled with so much power that it can deliver you from aids it can deliver you from um, plagues it can deliver you from sickness and disease it can it can destroy cancer because it's pure power uh it's the power of god it's god himself in word format in the beginning was the word of god the word of god was with god and word of god was God, is God, present tense. It's God. It's just another format of God in word format. So uh, when I was in heaven, God showed me how much power was in each letter of each word. The words were vibrating like they were alive, like, you know, like it had a heartbeat, like it was active and it was a very alive. And the words begin to get bigger and bigger and bigger in my spirit. He do. He was just showing me how powerful his words um, are, and he let me feel his presence. God is love. Um, so if your experience uh, on the earth is filled with attacks and meanness and uh, people mistreating you, just know that's not God. If you experience a loss of a child or an unexpected tragedy know that it's not god god is not involved with anything that brings sorrow uh to people um the dark side the dark forces are a part of that um activity and that is why i have a very active fasting and prayer life so that i can stay on top of this game um, of darkness and take authority and dominion over that, you know, over tragedies, over unexpected deaths. And that's why I work with my family to eat right, cleanse their body, take essential nutrients, you know, do everything that they can do um, to protect their health. And, um, you know, I've taught my children how to fast and pray and pull down strongholds and, you know, Let's face it, while we're on this earth, we're going to have to deal with dark forces. And God has given us tools in the Bible of how to handle satanic forces and darkness. And one of the major keys is fasting and prayer. You know, you got to fast and pray to walk in power with God to come up against all that darkness. Until God gets rid of Satan on the earth and all of the fallen angels, we have to contend and deal with evil. We have to. Uh, we have no choice. And that's another reason why God wants his children to be, after they, you know, accept Jesus in their heart, you must, you must be filled with the precious Holy Ghost, which is the power of God. That is, that power of the Holy Ghost, which is the power of God, will give you power to be successful and break the powers of uh, demonic forces and things that come against you in your family so I just wanted to uh, share this information with you uh, my experience of going uh, to heaven it is a real place and you get into heaven by obeying um, the word of God practicing obeying God's word you got to get up every day put it in your mind you know and ask the father father help me obey your word today help me you got to ask god for help every day to obey the word you know don't lie don't cuss don't steal don't have sex outside of marriage don't be a drunkard everything that god writes in his word we are supposed to be practicing walking up right before the lord that's what we're supposed to be doing and god watches us he watches to see who on purpose is practicing to walk up right now i'm a i i like to have fun i'm a free-spirited person you know my mom taught me to enjoy life so there are things that i like to do i like to uh 
I like water sports, you know, I like to snorkel, um, I like to go boating, um, it's been a long time since I've been fishing, but I do like to fish, um, I like to have a great time, I like to horseback, I love music, I love all types of music, Long's profanity is not attached to that, and cussing, I don't like cussing and I don't like profanity, because that's um, disrespect in the presence of God um, inside of me but I love music I grew up around music so I'm very careful about where I place my spirit you know I'm very careful about that like I'll go to a scholarship um, event where there there's music there um, I don't go to places where um, you know, they're they're introducing drugs or something like that. I'm not a part of that kind of scene. You know, I like museums. You know, there are. You know, I'm just very careful about where I place my spirit when it comes to um, music. And although I enjoy music, I I'm just very very respectful to God, and I like to enjoy myself and have a great time. I love music, so um, I just wanted to uh, share that. Uh, with everyone and to know what I want everybody to know that God is watching you he's watching every area of your life um, it's up to you to make um, choices to want to please the Lord and if you're having trouble with your flesh uh, with obeying God don't make that as an excuse for not trying you should be incorporating fasting and prayer I did a video yesterday about fasting and prayer and the importance of uh keeping that flesh dormant and keeping your spirit strong so that your spirit is making decisions that um are pleasing to the lord so i just you know i felt led to share this information because god first of all instructed me to do this and for all those who are new to my ministry God talks to me through words. He'll he'll write words out in the spirit where I can see it. Oftentimes when I'm standing in front of people, he'll write a word right across their forehead so I don't know how to pray for them or how I don't know how to minister to to people. He'll let me know if I I'm standing in front of some in front of somebody if they have HIV. He'll let me know uh, if somebody's in sexual sin. He'll let me know if somebody is a liar, um, he'll, he'll just let me know what's going on with people so I'll know how to handle people, so I'll know how to pray for people, how, and I'll know how to minister to people. So I obeyed um, the Spirit of God today. Listen, it's going to be a beautiful day in Michigan, and um, I just pray it's safe wherever, wherever you are. I'm definitely praying for people in Europe because I, I saw the flood going on. So I'm definitely praying for everybody in Europe, praying for everybody uh, on the West Coast with all those fires that are are, are just raging and, um, and, and flooding in different parts of the United States of America. I'm just praying for everyone, praying for everybody who are in the hospital right now for uh, COVID-19, um, the Delta variant, and um, I'm just praying for everybody. Listen, the Father God loves you. Jesus loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. I love you, and Jesus is Lord.